chance. So hi everyone, um, we're live again. So uh, at this point, we'll just uh, um, keep this uh, slide deck rolling up until we hit uh, the top of the hour. Okay, something happened that we didn't intend. So. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Okay, let's now try it again. There we go. So we'll just start in, in, in a couple of minutes at the top of the hour with the um, Adam session. You are muted. I am right now. Now you're not. Uh, now I'm not. So we have a, another minute. Um, and uh, uh, um, we are expecting all the audience to be uh, ready to go with us. Okay, and uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and um, I will give chance to um, Adam to do his uh, amazing presentation, uh, Adam style. Um, and I want to also thank him for uh, being our MC for the whole event today. So if you have questions for Adam, uh, please um, uh, go for it. Uh, he is more than eager to uh, answer the questions. So Adam, okay. handing it over to you. Perfect. So is my screen full? You see the slides? You see the slides and I'll maximize your screen. So uh, both of our faces will go. Uh, Minimal style. Yeah, my CPU is maxed out right now, and just because I uh, showing you the slides, so it will be a little bit more quiet. I hope if we start coding. <laughs> so uh, regarding EclipseCon, um, there are actually just two viable tracks, right? So we have web cloud development and cloud native. And what I check out, so lots of the speakers are going to attend the EclipseCon conference as well. So it will be nice to see you again. So I will have a chat with Iber, for instance, for sure. Uh, regarding micro profile. Okay, now back to my session. Um, a few slides. I would, the most important slide is probably, let's say, this is just uh, ads, is this one. So, um, in this show, I'm answering uh, questions, usually micro profile and Jakarta e questions. So, if you are interested, join is completely free. And uh, yeah, and this basically was, this were the slides, so almost no slides. So, I can kill that. And uh, now I would like to code a little bit. So, uh, this junk only means um, I would delete the folder afterwards. So this is no. So um, what I usually do is um, I would like to start a project, uh, and let's say call the project speakers. And uh, what happened right now, um, I do it a lot. I could use, of course, the um, initializer from the web page or whatever, but I like to automate everything. And what you see here is uh, just an archetype, a very easy one. And what the archetype does, it, it generates a project and uh, it is not on the top because 
I'm using a micro profile to zero, not three, um, but this is just a number. And um, I would like to um, show you that. Hopefully, it's in the right folder. So just go the junk. And it is. So, um, and the project basically comprises um, Java 8 and MicroProfile to zero. I was uh, a little bit late with that. So, of course, I will replace that with Jakarta E. I will. Even probably next week or a week, long, a week after. Uh, why not? It doesn't make any difference. And um, uh, I, I won't have to change it um, uh, later. But the point is, this is the setup for my projects. It's not like I created this for the conference. This is what I use all the time. And as you can probably see, I always use both. So let's say this is Jakarta E and uh, MicroProfile at the same time. And the reason is most of the runtimes support both. So uh, most, I mean, Open Liberty, um, a white fly partially. So if you polyfill white fly with a small rye, it also supports MicroProfile more or less fully. And uh, um, uh, Glassfish, of course, and Payara I use a lot. And Tommy also supports both. So, um, so this is for me, uh, this Jakarta E is more like a really stable operating system. And the micro profile are more like an useful features, uh, which uh, are released more often. So, uh, so this combination works really, really well. So, OK, uh, now we cover that. And um, what um, I would like to do is to use my own tool. And this tool is called what, SH. And this is the most simplistic or primitive tool you can properly build. The idea I got in, uh, in a JavaScript workshop where a JavaScript attendee asked me, do you have in Java something which watches the changes in source main Java and deploys that? And I say, no, but uh, it is really easy to build. build. So what, uh, uh, what, what JS does is, um, this is, by the way, Payara server. So uh, I use it a lot. And we also have Open Liberty, and this is a new version. Even newer, what Kevin uh, um, uh, showed us, and the new version is Open Liberty 1908. And what I usually use, I use everything. So if I use um, Open Liberty, what I will use in a second, I use the full thing. So for me, there is no real reason to optimize because if you go, if you if you download just that, it will behave like this. What I show you in a second. So there's actually no reason just to use you no know, micro profile or just web profile or whatever. So the runtimes are surprisingly small. Uh, and this is true for all the runtimes. So uh, Payara is uh, probably the, the largest, but the largest means, you know, uh, it consumes about, I don't know, uh, 60 megs uh, idle. So it's not like it is a, it's a pixel of RAM. OK, so now uh, this is the Open Liberty. And uh, the tool I, I, I told you about is the what. And what is is just a jar where uh, you can start and watch the changes. And I would like to use the what because you get the worst possible experience um, here. Why that? Because what it does is it watches the changes and then fires up uh, Maven clean install. So there are no tricks, no, no hot replacement or deployment or whatever. So I will just launch that. And what it does, it just builds my speakers project. And uh, it deploys this to all servers I have. And um, this is a white line. This is Open Liberty. This is, uh, I think, uh, Tommy. And this is Payara. As you can see, uh, I have 4K uh, was deployed to all the servers. And this 4K is 4K with Java E or Jakarta E and MicroProfile. Why that? Because in a MicroProfile or Jakarta E project, all the dependencies we have are usually provided. And there are really successful projects which are doing exactly that. So they don't allow any external dependencies. And by the way, right now, I perform a code review where they are depending on Jakarta Commons Lang just to have string util not blank, for instance. So um, in my eyes, it's not strictly necessary. The smaller the runtime, the faster deployment. And the faster deployment, um, the better the productivity. OK, so now we have that. And what I would like to do is to start Liberty. So now uh, start Liberty, and it starts the fresh Liberty. Uh, as you can see, this is the very fresh one. So I, um, I had lots of time as MC of this event. So I installed the, uh, the, um, the uh, Open Liberty or Webster Liberty behind the scenes. As you can see, it uses MicroProfile 3.0, the new one, and all the dependencies behind. So um, the project, what is the project? So the project comprises a ping resource, which is simple. 
and uh, superflu is common, so like this. So, and as you probably should see right now, uh, what already recognized the change and deploy the project into seconds. Um, so you can absolutely use what uh, just download a jar in Java manage jar and you get the same experience here. Okay, and um, the message is going to be injected from uh, from there, and uh, it could be overridden if you're running on Kubernetes, uh, for instance, uh, by uh, DC. This is the, this is the standard setup uh, deployment config, and the pink resource itself is uh, not scoped. So um, I could make it uh, an EGB or uh, or CDI bean right now, but it's even not necessary, and it just returns a pink string pink. So. What we get from that is hopefully, if it works, now a little bit nervous, is for the following. Um, local host, and the port is 9080 because it's open liberty, so it started. And then we had speakers, uh, resources is the default and pink, and we have the micro profile pink, and this comes from that because um, we have a JAXOS configuration, extends applications, we don't have to register any resources. They are automatically registered by, by all run, our runtimes I know. And the uh, entry URI's resources, convention of a configuration means speakers. So there is no need for configuration. By the way, I have to say that. And um, speakers, so what it means is the URI comprises localhost, speakers, resources, pink. OK, so far so good. So what we get from that? So uh, first of all, uh, this is configurable. So if I would change that, enjoy, it would change here. So, um, and I don't use that at, um, that much, but I get lots of questions how to configure Jakarta E or micro profile uh, applications. So I included this in the profile. What we usually do, we expect uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes to configure that so we don't ship uh, properties. Usually they don't make a lot of sense to ship properties uh, if, um, if you expect, uh, for instance, um, how it's called, um, Config maps to to exist uh, in your uh, on your environment. Okay, now we have that. So what we could do, of course, I could add now another class um, and call the class a speaker, and um, and the speaker is probably. Hey Adam, um, any chance to increase your font a little bit? Oh really? Yeah. Uh, font eighteen. Better? Yeah, I think we will all be happy. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, name and uh, it doesn't matter, but let's say title of my presentation. It should be session, but you know we are agile, so just do that. So, and uh, what I could do, I could just return the speaker here. So, if I do that, let's say new uh, speaker, speaker. And uh, there is no constructor because I forgot that. So I would like to create a convenience constructor, and with um, with that, and the speaker has a name, and let's say Kevin, and the talk was uh, dummies. Jakarta EE for dummies, like that. So um, it almost works. What I have to do is to tell the server. Hey, what is it? And it's media type JSON. So uh, now the server knows it's JSON. So what I what uh, should happen right now? So if I return, if I do this, I get the JSON. So the raw data looks like JSON. And uh, what I also get, which is more interesting, I get. Um, uh, the endpoint for an um, open API. So what happens, there was so-called Swagger, um, uh, Swagger schema or Swagger annotations are configured uh, uh, or generated uh, for free. And uh, with, this is a nice extension from Open Liberty. With that, I can even test that. So I can say, I would like to try it out, execute, and I will see this here. So this is a nice little feature. We use this uh, particular at startups all the time because it is it's very productive and by the way of course i can um i can um customize that so i could say api response and let's just do the description and what i see in projects is <laughs> in real world what someone will do is gets uh, or returns a speaker of course right this is the enterprise way of programming and 
we will have today return a speaker. So now we are uh, enterprise ready. So let's do that. And um, so what happens now is if I will, oh, wait a second, do the open API thing, open a open API. So there should be some more description here, returns a speaker. So you can absolutely, you know, add your schema, schema references and tweak that with micro profile annotations. So for me, it's a big deal because sometimes we are forced to generate um, a Swagger API without obvious reasons, but uh, some companies would like uh, to have that. And uh, the nice story with that is I don't need any external Swagger dependencies. So if you take a look on my war, you see uh, it is 4K. So it's still 4K. So there is no difference in size. Um, OK. So now. Um, I, in, in the chat, I saw previously, you know, how to get rid of EGBs. So let's say I don't have EGBs right now because I just configured Open Liberty to just support MicroProfile 3 and I didn't activate the Java 8. So let's say in this particular environment, what I could do, I could, of course, use rely on request scoped and uh, transactional, which doesn't make a lot of sense here, but this this would behave somehow like EGB. This is JTA and this is request scope, and both um, are somehow similar to EGBs without pooling. So pooling is still lacking, but we could um, introduce pooling with bulkheads, for instance, somehow behavior. So what I just would like to have is one single annotation in future, like a stereotype, which you know uh, groups both. So I don't like to write transaction request scope every time. I would like you no. Know, the Jakarta E or Microprogram will ship a single convenient annotation as stateless is for me. So um, this would be the replacement of EGB. This is a little bit slower, um, not on Quarkus, but on all servers, because uh, request scope will, will create the whole instance trees on every request, and stateless is pulled, so everything is injected just once. So, OK, so we have that. But of course, what I would like to have is uh, we need a uh, Conference or Jakarta One, Jakarta One catalog, and the Jakarta One catalog will return just the speakers, speakers, and this is uh, Kevin and Ira. So let's do that. And this pink resource injects the uh, speaker. And uh, no, sorry, Jakarta One. Jakarta one catalog, catalog, and um, here, do this, let's say here, yeah. Kevin, not Kevin, rather than this, sorry, this catalog dot speakers. So um, this could already work, let's see. Um, this was um, speakers, resources, pink. And uh, Kevin Ivar, it already works. So, and uh, our deployment is now 5K because we're a little bit of code, but as you can see, uh, no problem at all. So now, why it works? The reason for that is um, what I usually do is I activate the dependency injection everywhere, so I don't have to use dependent annotations or default scope or whatever. It just works out of the box. And so far, it was fast enough, so there were no optimizations needed. So uh, we have that. And what I could do right now is I could add, for instance, uh, what I would not advise in real world, real world projects, like just add, for instance, Dimitri annotations, just for fun. So, and this activates the metrics. And why would uh, why I don't advise to do that? Because what I see in projects is you know, all methods are metered. So you get you know, millions of dashboards without any meaning. So what I would propose is rather have a, a view business driven annotations which uh, say you exactly what happens in the system and not just you know, expose the performance of all methods. But let's say this is useful. Now, if, um, if I will switch here to my matrix, matrix, and then the most interesting application matrix, oh, application, what's wrong with my matrix? Application. So does not work, but these are the metrics we saw before, and um, interesting. So the metrics are available with uh, from uh, except application slash JSON, 
with with that and they are available as the Prometheus format which is actually uh, a bit standardized and this is the usual format you know you know the ASCII driven format but um, someone in the chat asked before you know this is only Prometheus what about the other monitors the truth is uh, Prometheus does not matter a lot because there's open matrix specification so what happens right now is the Prometheus output gets uh, standardized and called open metrics. So um, in one point of time, all the other vendors are supposed to support um, the open metrics, the Prometheus format, and um, there will be even a protocol buffer based protocol. So, so what we see right now um, is uh, it, it was started by Prometheus, but um, it will be available to all monitoring tools soon or even now. And uh, the trick was, again, if you have the JSON style, with the JSON style, what you get is you will be able uh, with the JSON style, you know, to uh, very easily to access that from a web application and um, and, and and parse the, the the JSON object because the because the um, yeah, the JSON object is, is really easy is easy to use. Okay, so we have the uh, meter annotation, and um, we can of course say you are now request scope or not. So what you usually will do is, for instance. Um, you could could request scoped here, request scoped here, and this scope is going to be derived uh, de uh, derived from the from the other one. So um, what I usually do is we have uh, one boundary, and it starts transactions, and then it um, it it, it uh, is responsible for serialization. So this JSON, this is the JSON B specification, if I mentioned uh, earlier. And um, with that, we don't really need uh, DTOs anymore. You can just create a Java class with public attributes, and they are exposed as JSON. And um, the uh, Jakarta One catalog, this is where I would implement a true business logic with accesses, other services, and thus whatever you like. So um, OK, so we have the uh, meter annotations, uh, string speakers. And uh, what we could do right now is, uh, for instance, uh, another trick is I could just throw an exception just for fun. So throw new illegal state exception, state exception or uh, connection problems exception, more and more exciting. Connection problems exception, um, power outage. What I really had to do today morning, so there was no power. Um, so create class. So I will create the extends exception. Let's say extends runtime exception, and um, and this is the message, and this would be super no power or uh, message. So this is what we need to do. Okay. Now this is now thrown. This can be commented out. So if I try it again. Um, and do the thing with uh, speakers, uh, resources, and ping. I, I see nothing, and uh, I should actually see. Um, I should actually actually see 500, and I see the 500, and you see a uh, connection problem, power outage. So um. Open Liberty is nice. The recent uh, Payar is also nice, but uh, an older service will show you here you no know, state trace from hell. So you know everything they can show you, the whole state trace, which is not really nice. So what I um, what I see in projects is uh, in Jakarta or Java e projects is uh, they um, invent exceptions first and they catch the exceptions here, which is actually too much. Um, it actually just blurs on all the beautiful code, <laughs> Jakarta code. So. What uh, you can do very easily is just use a feature from Java in our microprofile, and I could just use web application exception instead. And here I can say response uh, status uh, status, let's say 400 uh, header and uh, info message. And I think build. So looks good. So now what I what I what I created now a self-mapped exception 
which serializes itself into 400 with additional info. Um, is your decision if you need the header or not. And uh, let's see what happens. So if I repeat that, I should see perfect. So I see 400 info power outage. I could even tell I don't like 400. Why not just 200? And just uh, this is this is dangerous, but uh, could be fun. So um, where is it? I have to save it. So saving is very important, even in Jakarta world. So uh, still doesn't work. Oh, 200. So now we got uh, we generated um, status 200. It was just for you, <laughs> um, with an exception, which is uh, not usual. So, but um, what you can also do, I could say, okay, this is nice, but um, let's do that. And what I could do, I could say retry. And I would like to retry uh, two times. Uh, three is default and three times. And now there's a different specification. This is no more microprofile matrix rather than fault tolerance and, um, and retry. So if we just retry twice and then fail. So if I will do that, um, then you will see here, hopefully somewhere, the dots. So these are the dots because it tried to retry. So, and now I can say um, string uh, speaker with power, and a speaker with power is hopefully uh, James G, so secret person. And um, I can say here uh, fallback, and the fallback is uh, fallback method is going to be speaker with power. And uh, I hope, no typo, so no, speaker with power. So now if I repeat that, I get James after two retries and I still see uh, 200, but now without exception. So it retried for me twice. And uh, the nice thing is, uh, wait a second, I already deployed during the session 22 times with standard, uh, the largest possible open liberty. And um, and um, and my thin word is still 6K. By the way, uh, the fan you hear is from a different machine. I just use one machine for screen sharing, and then my other machine is pretty quiet. So I show you something incredible the first time. Now I think the internet should break. So this is the another notebook. Um, so now, cool. So um, so what it basically means? Most of my microservices are tiny. And I performed already a few interviews with uh, with projects wanted you know to uh, to to reveal the tru truth. And the um, the microservices were way below one meg. Why it's important? If you push that to the cloud or to private cloud, the the smaller the war, the faster deployment. Also, Java E was stable for years, and I hope after Java X uh, stabilization, Jakarta E will also stable. So what it means is. If you don't have to rely on external dependencies, like for instance histories, um, then um, then you don't have to migrate. You are not you're not forced to migrate your project just because an external dependency broke. And this is actually a very usual case in my projects where a forgotten dependency causes some trouble. Okay, so now we have that. So what we did so far, so we implemented a, a JAXRS service with. Um, with a, um, a, um, a open API so far, and what's about what's about uh, hash checks? So I don't use hash checks a lot, uh, but what I would like to do is to show you the newer hash checks. Hopefully they will work. For this purpose, I will have to switch to uh, three zero. Wait a second. Yes, never try that. So um, let's see whether it actually works. And now I can say I would like to have readiness probe. So there are readiness probe, and it will extend the health check. I hope health check now implements. Wait a second, implements health check. This is one of the view specifications. I don't I don't use a lot, and why? I tell you in a second. And this could be application scoped, and this is uh, readiness. Perfect. And uh, what I would like to do is to say um, return return um, health check response. I think I can do the name exactly. Uh, speaker is ready. And then build. Done. I hope it's enough. 
So now, what happens now is if I switch to here and uh, do the health and health readiness. Oh, implements health check. Should work, but it doesn't. Um, there could be an error. The problem with that, why I'm not using this a lot, is the following. Um, if you if you think about that, so if I just return here health ready, I think. No. So if you if I do the health and um, and um, this is the health from the application server first. So if you deploy an if you deploy a named health check, what happens then is probably let's see, speaker. No, um, the problem is uh, if you are, if you have to set up Kubernetes readiness probes, um, you would like to differentiate between the application server is going to be ready or your application is going to be ready. So what we usually do is we expose our own readiness and liveness probes. It's just like a, a resource with uh, two methods, and uh, then you can use it directly from uh, from Kubernetes. So this is um, I, I never tried it before, so of course it has failed. But uh, what's 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 new? We have readiness and liveness probe, and both um, can um, um, can be used at the same time to add a new probes to to a JSON object, basically. So okay, I hope the application server still uh, or the application is still running. So um, let's do um, speakers again. Speakers resources pink resources and pink. So now it still works, just the health checks uh, um, uh, do not work properly. So now, what about full service? So what I can do is first, um, I can just reinstall, just for fun, Payara. And what it does is, this is a small script, and what it does is it, uh, it uh, just unzips and deletes a Payara and, and creates a new one. So. Um, before a project, I do it uh, sometimes, so just do that. So now the largest possible Payara is uh, is installed, and then I can say start Payara, and um, I'm not sure whether it supports uh, Java 11 or not yet, so i start Payara. And um, it will start and is already set up um, so that the what will deploy the application to both at the same time. So uh, what means right now is if I switch to what and do it again, 27 deployments, then uh, I could use a Payara because Payara uses uh, another port, 8080. And this is now response from Payara. So this was 9080 was Open Liberty, and this is Payara. And we should get similar output. So we can use Open API. And uh, I'm just curious about the health. So open API, 8080, let's do the matrix. So the matrix, you see, you get the same output and with application. And this is the application matrix I wanted to show you earlier. So you see the uh, Jakarta eCatalog speakers was invoked once. And you see also what's really nice is that the fallbacks were, um, are exposed as matrix as well, so you see how often we try it happen, which is really useful. So all the microprofile specs are are uh, integrated, so you don't have you know to register matrix to um, or uh, fault tolerance to matrix. So with that, and um, and now what also curious is about the health. So health, and it's up. So uh, this is the health check, and this is the generic one, not the specific one. And this is what I meant. So now the server says I'm I'm ready, but I think so. There are no readiness. Uh, readiness. Hey Adam, there is a question here. Um, why did yeah. you delete and reinstall Payara? What are you trying to demo with that? Oh, um, but this is um, this is just a straight Payara. So there are uh, you know there are no plugins, nothing, and um, the script is not for presentations. What I do it before my projects. And why is sometimes there could be a dirty cache or whatever, and I you know some forgotten dependencies, JDBC drivers. So what I usually do is I reinstall all my servers uh, before my project or before my proof of concept, and sometimes before the talks even. 
So um, I just had the script uh, here, so I just demonstrated that, so there's nothing specific with it. And um, why I showed you this right now? To show you how easy it is to install a server. So what you only have to do is, all servers I know, you have just to unzip them. So you just you know unzip, and, and, and after a few seconds, you have the whole runtime. And um, it's actually a very good question. So uh, for me, what's really important is, you know, time to hello world, or time to first commit. So uh, the shorter it, it is, or the shorter the time to be productive, the more acceptance you get in projects. And um, what's funny is, uh, I'm in some projects, uh, young projects, where the developers um, never had the chance, you know, to learn about the old J2E with deployment descriptors and uh, X doclets and so forth. And if I show them this, they are really delighted. They say, this is great productive technology. You know, what's the name of it? And I say, OK, we call it uh, Java E. I say, OK, cool. Perfect. So um, this is why uh, why I did it. But it, yeah, um, you can just do this because um, you know immutable infrastructure. Uh, you should be able to destroy your uh, your environment and set it up um, up again. And as a best practice in projects, what I don't like, you know, if it takes a lot of effort to set up the environment, set up you know whatever, it should be automated. So this is the point. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, since we are starting with the questions, um, uh, there is a, a question if you are going to share the examples post-session. Yeah, I can for sure, but they are not really valuable, but I can, yeah, of course, I can. Okay. And then um, there is also, um, uh, people are asking if you can uh, do some comparison, comparison between Torn Tail or Open Liberty or your opinion on other implementations. So maybe at the end of the session or at some point you can uh, give your input, if, if you will. Yes. So um, I do it right now because it's a great question. So I have to say all the application servers are great. So uh, I would say Tommy and Open Liberty are the smallest. Um, Payara Whitefly, uh, I mean, you see right now, I'm, I'm just deploying right now on Payara and Open Liberty at the same time. And uh, the deployments are usually in a few seconds. So um, the question is not what to choose. The question is what my clients already have. You know, if you have a, uh, if it's a rented company, just go with Whitefly. You know, if, if the company used Glassfish before, I would rather suggest um, uh, Payara. Some companies were forced to, to go with Tomcat, um, then Tommy is the perfect choice. So um, I, I would be actually, fairly open, which which runtime to choose. Thorntail, uh, I think, is an end of life. So I, I wouldn't use you know, Thorntail or, or, or Whitefly Swarm in, in, in modern projects. And the reason being is because of Quarkus. And um, I wanted, actually, to show Quarkus, but I won't do this because a session after me will show you Quarkus. So I use Quarkus a lot. So Quarkus is the successor of Thorntail. Um, yeah. And um, I prefer to use you know, the stock application servers. And the reason is. Um, and how to call it, um, stack overflow factor, uh, the you know, more general environment you are using, the higher is the chance that on error you will find a solution on stack overflow. But the more un unique Snowflake uh, project you are, the lesser the chance that you will find a, a solution to your problem. Cool. Any other questions? Tanya, everyone is happy? Everyone's happy. Thank you, Adam. Okay, so if we uh, we have a few minutes left, so uh, what I what I saw in um, or if the uh, did you have suggestions or suggest me, but um, about testing. So what I do in projects this is actually trivial. So I will just um, explain you. Wait for a question rather. Um, there is a Jaxores um, client, and I use the client for testing. And um, if there are no tests, no no questions, I will show you what I mean by that. So I would use the speakers, speakers ST. And with the speakers ST, this is now um, with uh, one eight. Still, most of my clients are using one eight. And uh, Jax RS that. So I would use the, um, this is um, standard dependency from Glassfish or from Payara. And why I need that is because I'm using now um, I'm going to to, uh, to to create a system test which accesses the microservice from outside. And um, what I would like to do is to create a JUnit class. And um, for that, I need a dependency. 
and the dependency is JUnit, and I would like to use the old one, so JUnit, JUnit, not the, yeah, exactly the four, let's do the four. So this is good enough, and then I can just create new JUnit test, and let's call it uh, speakers resource uh, IT, and this was in EE Jakarta 1. This is a nice package. So uh, we have that. And now what I could do, I can say now init and uh, before and uh, client build a uh, uh, new client. And this is my target. And the target was, let's do the glass fish, localhost 8080, uh, speakers, resources, and pink. It should be, of course, speakers, but I was too lazy to rename that this target under test and um, and this is the web target so now in a single test and the test is um a crud let's call it crud for first and test so and now i can say this um request and the request needs media type um media type json and i would like to have a json object this is good because JSON object is for different specification uh, already introduced by uh, Evar, and this is uh, and this is JSON P. So this is um, what was it? Speaker I hope. So and now of course uh, in unit test there should be no asserts, otherwise they could break. So what we can do is this is of course a joke. So this and now with a little bit of luck, and I would like to switch to. Uh, Java 8, because I think there's some trouble with uh, JDK 11. So, and just run it. So, if I run the test and with a little bit of luck, it works. So, this was my test name James G. Title Jakarta for Dummies. So, this was my test. And because we are a Jakarta show, so what we can do now, we, I can show you not enterprise Java beans rather than enterprise Jakarta beans. So, what we can do for sure now, I can say instead of request scope, I will use stateless. And uh, this should work because um, now we are using uh, EJB specification, which is another part of micro profile. And um, so just rerun the test to save time. So we run the test, test. And it still works now with EJBs. Um, so now we have uh, one typical EJB specification. Everything else is microprofile, or you know you can argue JAXORS is uh, exists in both in microprofile and Jakarta E. And um, and uh, where is my what? As you can see, the uh, the thin wall is still six K. So there is no difference in size, which is really good. And uh, the deployment is is, is fairly fast. So um, where is the deployment? So it was, uh, yeah, it is uh, like 200 milliseconds or something. Um, yeah. So any questions, Tanya? So we even have system tests. So now why it is so valuable to have that? Because with that, what you can do, I could do the following. I would like to create, set up Java E project, add 10 these, and this project, by the way, uh, I was already uh, busy as an MC GitHub during Kevin's last presentation. There are no questions. There, there are more questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened was during the uh, presentation, I set up already a repository for Jakarta E Essentials archetype. So the next session, hopefully, it was three hours ago, I will use the new Jakarta E archetype instead of the Java E811. So uh, the Kevin and, and his team were too fast the last night, or I don't know where, when they um, they shipped Jakarta E. So now we can have a Jakarta E uh, archetype. So this will come soon. So okay, go with the questions. What's the question? Okay. So mm -hmm. let me uh, read you the questions. So hold on. Why the application server size doesn't matter to you? Is the idea applicable to applications deployed on the cloud in uh, terms of cost? Particularly uh, applicable for the clouds. What I what I didn't show you right now is oh my Docker is running. Okay, so um, it's the following. 
Um, what I usually do, I deploy with Docker. And as you can see, there's Airhex Glassfish, and let's go with Airhex White Fly. So um, now, what I can do now is uh, I'm in the speakers project. Yes. Now I can go here, go to speakers, see the speakers, and do Maven clean install. Um, Docker build minus T, and the name, let's see, uh, Jakarta speakers dot and uh what happens right now it built the microservice with the entire white fly so this is the cloud experience you get if you use the full application service and if i go to docker history jakarta slash speakers you will see the reason is because of immutable um, layering in, in Docker. What you can see is 20 seconds ago, I created a, a cloud-ready Docker image, container image, which is 6K. And everything else is half year old or three years old even, because the first layer is the Red Hat operating system. And the other layers is uh, are uh, the, the uh, Java and probably Whitefly six months ago, the recent Whitefly. White and what we do in the cloud? We push this, this layers, you know, every three months. And daily, we just have to push 6K. And it means we have to push. It, it, it happens automatically behind the scenes. So if I would say Docker push, it would just push 6K, not everything, not uh, 500 max or whatever it is. And uh, with Quarkus, a similar idea. With Quarkus, is like a super jar. But if you look inside the jar, the jar refers to already existing libraries. And for me, the separation between the business logic and infrastructure is crucial for cloud native. Cloud native. And all recent application servers are doing this, as well as um, even the, the, you know, the Uber jars micro profile, for instance, the uh, my, um, Whitefly Swarm did so-called hollow jar approach and um, Pyara Micro as well. They both supported uh, hollow jar. What it means is the jar from the application servers and my war or jars, they are separated. Cool, great question. We could even try to run it, minus D. Uh, other question? Yeah, let's go for the other question. So um, what is your opinion on what should be done with Jakarta EE in the future? What is the good roadmap for you? Uh, if I would have the absolute power, I would try to prune as much as possible. So all specifications or create, you know, a full profile with everything included. And then like, let's say the uh, mainstream profile, whatever you call it, with uh, pruned everything. Because, you know, the uh, the less specs you have to look at, the, uh, the easier it is to learn. So I will try to drastically simplify everything if possible. Then if you ask my personal opinion, I would, uh, I'm for the Bing Bank uh, migration. So we have a clear cut Jakarta E, no new. It has nothing to do with J2E, just, just go straight. I know it could be painful, but I mean, if I had the power and the time to do it. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, what, I, what I really like is the separation right now between the Jakarta E and MicroProfile, not separation, but there are two distinct projects because th there are two distinct release cycles. You know, we get MicroProfile four times a year, which is really exciting. And I would expect Jakarta E to move a little bit slower. I wouldn't expect, you know, to ship four releases of Jakarta E a year. So, um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's move on with other questions. What is the current state of Quarkus? Uh, is it production ready? Does it support all the features that Open Liberty or some other MP uh, implementation, microprofile implementations do? Uh, Quarkus cannot be, and I think never will be, a micro profile fully compliant. And the reason is because Quarkus is built for optimizations, and Quarkus um, is not very good with reflection. Uh, having said that, we already successfully ported some Java E and micro profile projects to Quarkus without any major issues. So Quarkus is a little bit different because the, it aims to uh, compilation to a native library, which is tiny. So with Quarkus, you can uh, you can compile you know the micro profile into uh, into eight Mac um, uh, uh, Go like library. So it's, um, and, and recently in a, in a project we actually used even Quarkus as a web server. So we shipped one binary uh, Quarkus jar or jar. It was a binary file 
which uh, which contained um, these static files, for instance. So and um, and is it uh, production ready? I would say I'm not Red Hat, but uh, for my for my observations is the hotspot version yes, and the Graal VM version I would test a little bit more because it's very new. Okay, so uh, there is a um, uh, need for clarification. When you say Wildfly, do you mean Torntail? No, Wildfly, I mean, um, what I use here is the Wildfly full. I always use the largest available service. So Wildfly 70 full, Payara full, uh, Open Liberty, I use the largest available Open Liberty. So what I downloaded is today is, um, no, I.O., I think. What I downloaded is all J features. So this is uh, the version you see right now. So I never used micro or swarm and I, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. There is also a question and I think you, you already touched on it. Uh, what do you think about Torntail uh, comparing to other implementations? Torntail is end of life. So. Okay. No Torntail. Would you recommend migrating the business logic from EJBs to CDI? No, because um, I would only recommend that uh, if uh, EJB is duplicated or will die. Right now, it's fine. And on common application servers, right now, EJBs are faster than uh, CDI even, except Quarkus for uh, for because Quarkus generates uh, lots of bytecode at build time, and, and and application servers are working with reflection. And if you really have to migrate that. It will be fairly easy. So you will have to replace it stateless with a request scoped and transactional or your own stereotype. So it's not a big deal. If I have a default micro profile config file with my local configuration and then for my different environments set up uh, the variables, will mm -hmm. the environment variable override the file values? Exactly. This is the beauty of uh, micro profile config. So um, what we really do is the following. So we, I have the microprofile config here, and this is going to be overridden by uh, environment entries. So it means system get env, so the um, operating system environment variables. And you can override that with system properties. So we use for testing, for instance, so we can override the environment entries with system properties because it's easier to test. OK, I'll keep going. Don't so you think then, what I would like to do is to create here a uh, class called speaker speaker accessor. And the speaker accessor is basically my test. And this is the, the whole thing, the reason why I write system tests with Jaxor's clients. So if I do this and before, there is no before in uh, what we have post construct. And this is not necessary at all. So we can say this returns a JSON object. And uh, this returns the speaker. So then, in ping resource, what I could do, I can just inject the uh, speaker accessor. Accessor, this is not needed, and then say accessor dot crowds exactly, and uh, to string to string and uh, plus uh, just from another service. So I know with a little bit of luck, it could work. So uh, I will just launch what here, and this should deploy the application to all servers as well. So if I go now to localhost, localhost 8080, attendees, resources, and ping, attendees, looks good, but it doesn't work. So, uh, wait a second, attendees. Yep, 
resources pink and 9080. So something wrong with pink resource. A pink resource, this looks good. So we have speakers resources pink. This works, so we can just uh, try that again. So this works, so this is good. Um, we have attendees resources pink, get string pink accessible to string from another service. Interesting. So have to work and should work. And uh, I will just do it request code. It's not necessary, but it will reinitialize itself. Um, and so this doesn't. And 8080. Also, does not. What's a pity? Both servers. So I did actually. So this speaker, speaker, speakers. It should work, it will work, but it doesn't. So this is the uh, funny speakers what? Wait a second. No one tells me that. I'm in the wrong in the wrong folder. So I have to start it here. So now it should be better. Now it works. So no one told me this. Um, I just tried to ship, or I forgot to deploy the service. In Jakarta, in microprofile, it's very important that you never forget to deploy the services. But what you see right now, the service attendees communicate to the uh, service uh, speakers. And what I was able to do by copy and paste, uh, we used the entire, um, the entire uh, unit test or system tests. And in, on, on a CI CD pipeline, this is what happens usually. We have a dedicated module which accesses the microservice from outside. Um, exactly, and um, what uh, to make it uh, a little bit more useful, what I could do right now, I could actually say, I would like to inject, I think this registry type and um, application and uh, metric registry, hopefully, yes, registry. So what I could do right now is um, just rewrite it a bit. So let's do this. I can just delete that. And what I would like to do is to show you a business metric. And now uh, I would say read entity and JSON object. So just rewrite it a bit. And then say um, registry. Counter. And the name is uh, speakers underscore plus speaker get status. You see where I'm going with that in. So, and with a little bit of luck, so let's do this. And now watch that. So I go here and do matrix, matrix slash application. And what you can see is that I created a, a counter on the fly where uh, I had 200 three times. So what it does is it creates counters on the fly with all my HTTP status codes and uh, the number of invocations. So this is actually a very useful technique um, to create dynamic metrics. And this is a far more useful than just put you know meter on it and hope that someone is interested to know how fast the method was. And by the way, this method could be um, could be annotated with bulkheads and what what Iva uh, what Eva showed uh, earlier with uh, bulkheads or um, or the other annotations, timeout and so forth. Any other questions? What I okay. will do, I will push the code to Ahex. Yeah, so my this is GitHub.com. And I'm being air hacks. And I'm being an air hacks. Should be empty. And uh, if it isn't, it will be empty in a second. And I will push the code here. 
Okay. So thank you and enjoy Jakarta together with MicroProfile. Okay, so we're just um, a few minutes short of the next session and uh, um, I will thank you all for the questions, for the questions that weren't answered. Um, we will uh, get to them a little bit later. Um, Adam, thank you so very much. And uh, thank you for emceeing the whole event. So everyone, uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions uh, um, uh, to Adam uh, throughout the day. Uh, and at this point, I will ask you to move on to the uh, next session. Yes. See you so there. I can introduce the speaker, right? Yeah. Bye.